Welcome, Ms. Donovan. You have five minutes to begin your address. Please begin now. Thank you. My name is Kelly Donovan, and up until June 2017, I was a police officer with Waterloo Regional Police. I represent thousands of police officers from across Ontario and Canada. I do not support Bill 175 as it stands now. During my time at Waterloo, I witnessed misfeasance during internal investigations of other police officers at the service, more specifically unlawful arrests of members, corrupt investigations and criminal allegations being overlooked. Waterloo only allows members of the public to make a complaint of misconduct, and the OIPRD does not accept complaints from police officers. So therefore, I made a lawful delegation to my police services board to disclose the misconduct of several high-ranking members of the service, and as a result, I was disciplined and silenced. Chief Brian Larkin ordered me to have no further contact with members of the board, I was relegated to administrative duties, and I was put under investigation for eight Police Service Act charges. There was never a complaint from a member of the public. This was the result of a Chief's complaint. Over the next 14 months, I was constructively dismissed. Chief Larkin used the Police Services Act to silence me so that I could no longer disclose to the board the unethical conduct happening within the service. Following my delegation to the board, another police service was contracted to conduct an impartial review of a recent internal criminal investigation. That review was negligent and biased and is refutable evidence that when police investigate police, there is bias. During my constructive dismissal, I wrote a 93-page report citing cases that show just how systemic misfeasance is in Ontario Police Services and how often police chiefs and ineffective oversight bodies are able to silence police whistleblowers. This report is contained in tab A of my submission. I made complaints to all of the applicable police oversight bodies, and none of them chose to enforce their legislated authorities. In June 2017, a $167 million class action lawsuit was filed against Waterloo, and I believe that politicians would now start to listen to us police officers trying to expose to you what goes on behind closed doors. Two weeks later, Chief Larkin was elected as president of the OACP, and it became very obvious to me that police chiefs in Ontario are above reproach as a result of our current and proposed legislation. When I resigned, I sent my report to 200 politicians in Ontario. Those emails are listed in tab B of my submission, and I believe five members of this community were on that list, or this committee, I apologize. Um, I received a cookie-cutter response from Minister Lalonde, and I'd never received a response from Minister Nackvi at all. Despite Justice Tullock recommending a whistleblower program for police officers, as a result of submissions like mine, this did not make it into the bill. In fact, I don't believe my report had any influence over Bill 175 in any way. I have three suggested amendments to the bill. Number one, I would recommend that the bill be amended to combine Schedules 2, 3, and 4 into one Special Investigations Unit. It is inefficient and costly to the taxpayer to have three separate oversight bodies, the Discipline Tribunal, Inspector General, and the SIU, um, all while still permitting chiefs to conduct their own investigations. This does not allow for more accountability and transparency. Each of these bodies determine if there are grounds for a criminal or provincial offence, including misconduct. The only differences between these bodies is who they investigate and from whom they receive their complaints. These investigators will be the most skilled, knowledgeable, objective and ethical people. So why would we not maintain one central agency with satellite offices where resources can be shared? By changing the definition of official to include all persons in policing, the SIU would therefore investigate all complaints of criminality or misconduct, including the chief. Number two, alternatively, I would like to see changes made to part six of schedule one. Chiefs should not be exempt from disclosure requirements because they are not above the law. Inspectors should not be current officers, and it is blatantly obvious that a conflict of interest exists when you allow chiefs to investigate each other for criminal offenses. With regard to part nine of schedule one, Police officers should always be afforded the right to an impartial investigation. This is not achieved by allowing chiefs complaints. Under the bill, officers lose their right to a fair trial, which violates their constitutional rights. Only after a sanction is imposed can the officer appeal the decision. All allegations of misconduct should be handled by one central agency for consistency and fairness. This would end internal systemic misfeasance. I have 500 signatures on a petition to support that recommendation. The lack of consultation prior to the release of Bill 175 shows a continued reluctance by government to accept the gravity of internal corruption that exists within our police services. I am living proof that internal corrupt practices are eliminating good, honest people from the profession. I was an exemplary police officer until Chief Larkin used internal discipline to constructively dismiss me. Nothing in Bill 175 would prevent what happened to me from happening again to another honest police officer. In fact, after I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder last February, I could have, been, I could have faced termination under Part 7 of Schedule 1. This bill was prepared in haste without adequate consultation with the right people. If police officers were not scared into keeping quiet, you would receive hundreds of submissions just like mine. And I appreciate the opportunity to address you today. 
Thank you, Ms. Donovan. We'll begin with the PC side, Ms. Sure. Scott. Thank you very much. Um, I, that's quite a detailed um, report. I guess the, on the consultation part, I didn't know if you wanted to finish off anything more that you wanted. To, at five minutes is very I surprisingly short time. got it all in. Thank you. You did, but yeah, okay. You did. <laughs> On, on, so in Bill 175, you did mention schedules and that. I didn't know if you wanted to uh, speak about the consultation process, that it wasn't, it's not going to address what you experienced. In I this think bill, it has to be known that expand. police officers are scared into not speaking about anything. That's common knowledge within the policing community. I attended one of Justice Tullock's public sessions yes. as a way to voice my concerns to Justice Tullock. I was one of, I was one of the only officers in the room. When I attended the Kitchener session, that, that was in London, when I attended the Kitchener session, it was full of members from the service of very senior ranks. The, the, the image was put forward that you don't speak up, you don't attend and you don't give your feedback to these public sessions or you will be disciplined. And that's why I think there's a huge voice that is necessary to be heard in this process that is being silenced by legislation currently. Do you feel in Justice Tillich's report um, that what part is missing, I guess, and then, and then it's There is protection. I know there's protection against reprisal, <coughs> but there's no deterrent for reprisal. There is no whistleblower protection in Bill 175. That would allow an officer to anonymously <coughs> report misconduct from inside. And so that's very different from Justice Tullock's... Justice Tullock was recommending the whistleblower because okay. he understood the importance for that anonymity, and that was not addressed in Bill 175. Okay. And do you feel it's um, right across policing? Do you feel... It's gender No, I think it's, I think it's men and women. And since the time I resigned very publicly, I get calls daily from officers who say, I'm being put through the same thing. And that's why it's so important that there be an opportunity for those voices to be heard where they know there won't be any repercussion for them having spoken out. Okay. You have um, made this a, a very passionate plea. Uh, you've written books, a book. <laughs> um, and I, I'm just... Uh, a bit surprised that uh, Justice Tulloch kind of got, even though you feel that you weren't heard publicly when he was out there uh, making his... It, um, I apologize. His, his what I meant was that Justice Tulloch did listen to Yes, me. that's what I mean. So right. you were out there, Justice Tulloch listened. Yes. Uh, you, he made the recommendation, yet we don't see that that's correct. in Bill 175. So, right. okay. I think you've made that very clear. So thank you very much, thank Kelly, you. for all your work. Thank you, Ms. Scott, to the NDP, Ms. French. Hi, welcome. Um, and that was, you got a lot into that presentation. I'm impressed. Um, but I had a, I have a question here. I'm looking at, um, well, almost the first page of, of your uh, report here. Um, I have a question. You said no oversight body has chosen to exercise their legislative authority and investigate. Perhaps you can clarify for yes. me so that I have a bit more understanding of the internals and, and what you mean by that? So the complaints that I made to both the OIPRD and the OCPC were both within their legislated mandates. They were complaints about people whose conduct they should be overseeing. They came from the right person. I, I got letters back that those investigations were not in the public interest and they chose not to investigate them. And there have already been reports done where it's been stated that an internal affairs matter is a matter of public interest because that's when police officers uphold their most integrity. And how can we say that a, an internal matter is not a matter of public interest? If we have officers that are committing misconduct or illegal acts behind closed doors, the public needs to know that. And that's where there needs to be more accountability and transparency. Do you have... Um and I believe I did contain those letters in my submission, just so you can reference them. My response from the OCPC and the OIPRD are both in the submission. Do you have specific recommendations um, that, would, that would address that specific piece that should be in this legislation? Like yes, I'm hearing I, you say it's sort of a missed opportunity, but do you have thoughts on, on what the specifics should look like within legislation? I believe there can't be any... There can't be any persons in policing that receive any type of immunity. I think that's where the transparency piece comes in. And if it's a matter of an issue being of public interest or not being of public interest, then there has to be a public board that is consulted, a board of representatives from the community, and ask them, is it in your interest that we investigate this matter? Because nine times out of ten, they're going to be saying yes, where the politicians are going to be saying no. Do you have any um, thoughts? Because, as you said, you feel heard by Justice Tulloch. Yes. Um, and on the whistleblower um, provisions that that aren't in this bill. Um, do you have any do you have any guesses on on why it would not be included in this bill? I think there's an honest trust and belief that a person who comes forward would not be penalized. 
I, I honestly believe that, that that is the trust among politicians and the 30 community. 30 seconds. But I, I, I'm here to say that that's the opposite. So that is the fear. Officers don't come forward, even if it is encouraged. They don't because they know there will be repercussions, and that's the reality. So the idea of it, like you said, there's no deterrent for a reprisal. Right. Um, again, what, what do um, you think that should look it like? It would be nice if there was an offence that was almost as punishable as an offence against the SIU. If a boss took reprisal action against someone because they reported an incident, that person taking the reprisal action should be punished. Okay, some light reading. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. French. To the government side, Ms. Wong. Thank you very much for your presentation and your collective notes to us about what you have done. So in proposed Bill 175, the government is proposing um, the inspector general position. So I want to hear your opinion. So I'm going to ask you very point because of time. How do you feel about this particular position in terms of increasing police accountability, transparency, and some of your concerns? Because we're still not completely, because this is in public hearing stage, we're still listening to people. And I know, although you said you don't support this bill, proposed bill, we heard previous witnesses totally support the bill and don't delay. So I need to balance this piece because the previous witnesses were chiefs of Ontario. They told us don't delay any further. So I'm going to hear your views and I want to hear what you have to say about this Inspector General. Right. Position. So under the Inspector General section and that's yeah. why I think the opinions that you're hearing that are supporting it yeah. are the, the people who are given the power under that Inspector General section. So the Chiefs of Police can decline to provide disclosure that's part of an investigation. There's an exemption from of, of Chiefs of Police under that section where they do not have to make a disclosure. Um, you know, if, if you were a subject officer in an SIU, you would be forced to, but chiefs don't have to. Um, the other thing is if there's a, a criminal allegation against a chief of police, they appoint what the, the bill says is an unrelated police chief to do the investigation, but there is no such thing. You look at every police chief and they've progressed through their careers with each other. They all go to these camp retreats together. You know, some of them have dinners outside of work together. It's a community of friendships. You can't appoint a chief, basically an equal ranked officer, to do a criminal investigation of another equal ranked officer. There's a, a definite conflict of interest there. So I, I believe that the chiefs are supporting this because it's in their best interest no, this to do is so. Chiefs of Ontario related to the Indigenous, Indigenous. Oh, indig well, Indigenous. Uh, um, and specific to the in Inspector General section? No, they support Bill 175. Okay. They have directed this committee to go forward. Right. I think there are a lot of positive parts about this bill yes. and if I had more than five minutes, yes. that would be one section okay. I would say absolutely. And okay. the changes to the Coroner's Act, fantastic. Okay. There's a lot of things here that we need to progress with okay. and the changes to the SIU. Okay. I just don't understand why we have three bodies that are all looking at police, people in police and conduct um, critically, mm -hmm. but not working together. Mm -hmm. We're all looking at different bodies and we take complaints from different people, but why not have seconds. one agency of excellence? Okay, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wong, and thanks to you, uh, Ms. Donovan, for your deputation. I'd now invite our next presenter, please come forward.